In this pink tutorial, I'm going to show how to build a simple design to test the pink GPIO class, which can be used to control PS GPIO. PS GPIO are simple to use. No controller is needed in the PL, so you can connect them directly to your IP. You might use the PS GPIO for resets or other simple control signals. I'll be using Vivado 2020.1 for this tutorial. If you are using a different version, there may be some changes, but I hope you'll still be able to follow the steps. Remember, you should match the version of Pink that you're using to the version of Vivado that you'll use. Let me start by creating my Vivado project. I'll give it a project name. This name doesn't really matter. You can pick whatever you want. I don't have any RTL sources, so I'll skip this step. I'm going to select my pink Z2 board. If you're using a different zinc board, again, the steps should be the same. You would pick your own board or your own device at this point. If you're using a zinc ultra scale board, there will be some differences, but I hope you would still be able to follow the main steps in this tutorial. Okay, my project is now open and I'm gonna create a block design. Again, I'll give it a name and this name doesn't really matter. I'll call it PS underscore GPIO underscore tutorial. Now my block design is open. I can add my first IP, I right click and add IP. And I'm gonna pick the utility vector logic block for this design. If you have a board with buttons, LED switches, this is ideal for playing around with the PS GPIO. I'm going to try and keep this tutorial generic. So if you're using a board that doesn't have any GPIO peripherals or limited IO, I'm going to keep everything internal in this design. The utility vector logic block allows me to select logical gates. You can see and, or, XOR, and not, and I can specify the size, the width, the inputs, the operands. So I'm going to set the width to one and I'm going to copy. Let's zoom in a little bit. And we can see that the operands here are zero to zero. So this is single bit. This is a one bit wide AND gate. Okay, let me copy and paste to duplicate this block. And I'm gonna do that three times to create four blocks in total. These are all AND gates at the moment. So let me change that. Let me select OR, let me select XOR. And let me select NOT. And for the NOT gate, it's slightly different. I've only got one input and one output. So this gives me something I can play around with in my design. I'm gonna rename these blocks. Next, I'll add the zinc processing system block. Whoops, not pink, zinc. And the obvious thing to do here is to run the block automation that's been suggested. So because I've selected my pink Z2 board, Vovato is aware of the, the board settings that are required and some of the features on that board, and it will apply those settings to the Zinc PS block. So by default, this is what I'll get. You can see an Axi master port has been enabled. You can see the F clock, that's, an, uh, that's a clock from the PS to the programmable logic. There's a corresponding reset, and I also have a USB enabled. To keep the design tidy, I like to disable anything that's not gonna be used. Some of these ports you can leave disconnected. Other ports, if they're not connected, the tools will throw a warning or give you an error when you try to build your design. So let me find the clock reset first and disable that. Let me go to the clock configuration, find that PL fabric clock and disable it. Then find the GP master AXI interface and disable it. And if I go to the MIO configuration, I can find that USB peripheral and disable it. So let me okay that and let's have a look at what we've done. Okay, so I've got a nice, simple, tidy block. I'm gonna go straight back into the same screen. I wanted to show you that piece first. And I'm going to show you how to enable those PS GPIO. It's worth noting that when we build our pink design, when we download our overlay, we'll only actually be using the hardware part, the bitstream, we'll only be configuring the programmable logic. Because our pink system will boot at power on, most of the PS settings are applied at that point. So a lot of the things that we're doing now, a lot of the configuration settings will already have been applied to our board, so they won't have any effect when we load our overlay but it's good practice to match your PS settings to, uh, to your board and to what Pink will be running. 
in order to create my hardware design, I do need to enable something in the block diagram. I need to enable those PS GPIO. This allows me to connect them to something. So let me enable the EMIO. And just to show you, we can select up to 64. I'm not going to use all 64, but actually it won't matter. I'll get a warning if I don't connect all of these, but it doesn't matter too much. So I'm going to select everything and I'll worry about how many exactly I need later on, or I'll put up with the warning that the tool will report to me. So the PSGPIO are tri-state. They can be used as input or output or as in-outs. I'm going to keep things simple for this design and use inputs and outputs separately. I'm not going to have any shared in-outs. So let me start with the GPIO outputs. And I'm going to use this to drive my logic gates. I could connect the PSGPIO directly to my IP. I'm connecting a 64-bit signal here to a single bit input, a one bit input. The tools by default will connect the lower bits, so in this case, bit zero, and ignore the upper 63 bits. And actually, that would be fine for that individual input to my AND gate. However, if I try to do the same thing on the second input to my AND gate, it, it by default, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to connect that bit zero. So that's not what I want. My first challenge is how do I select the bits that I want from this signal? And the way that I can do that is using a slice. So I'll slice off the bits that I want. So let me add this slice block. Let me again just connect all 64 of those bits from the PS GPIO out to my slice. Let me go into the configuration for the slice and I'm going to set the width to 64. I can specify which bits from D in I want to select. So I'm going to select from zero to zero. That will give me the first bit or bit zero. I'll connect that to the input of my AND gate. I'll duplicate that slice and I'll connect again all 64 bits of the PS GPIO out. And this time I'm going to select DN from one down to one. So again, it's going to be a one bit wide signal coming out of this block, but this time I'm selecting bit one. And I'm going to use that as the in gate and I'll use that as the input to my AND gate. I could rename these blocks, but I'll leave them. You can see that they've been automatically numbered for me and that's going to help me keep track of what I'm trying to do here. Let me duplicate another slice block. Again, I'll connect the inputs, I'll connect the output, and then I'll go back and make some changes. So this time I'm going to select bit two and the output width automatically updates single bit output again. And I could keep going. I could duplicate my slices again in the GUI in the block, di block design editor. Actually, if I look in the tickle console, I see, see that these commands have been echoed, the commands for the previous steps. So I'm going to connect the next block up by using the tickle commands. So if I go back, I can see the copy BD objects command was used to duplicate the slice block. So let me do that again. Let me just repeat that command. And if I look at my diagram, I can see I have a new slice block. And again, the numbering has incremented. So let me repeat that command again, and it will create me a new block and automatically increment the next number. So if I look at how I configure these blocks, so you can see I can use the set property command. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste and change the numbering. This was the command for slice one. So I'm just going to change it to slice three. I need to go from D in three to three. And I'll do exactly the same thing for slice four. Change the input D in from four to four to select the bit that I want. So I've configured my slice blocks. So now I need to find the command to connect them. So here I can see the command, the connect BD net command to connect my PS GPIO out to the D in of those slice blocks. So I'll just change this to slice three. And you can see that connection has been made for me. And I'm going to do the same for slice four. It's slightly more complicated to connect the outputs of these slices, only because I need to rename the block that I'll connect them to. I'll find one of the previous commands and I'll change the name of the logic gate that I'm connecting to. So instead of the not gate, I'm going to change this to the or gate. And that's the name that I gave that or gate block earlier on. And slice three will connect to op one. 
of the OR gate. And I'll do something similar for slice four to connect it to OP2. So depending on what you're doing, you might find it more convenient to build up a script like this in Tickle to run some of these steps for you. Or if you want to, you can do everything in the GUI. And I'll just go in and confirm those changes that I made in Tickle have actually been applied to the blocks in the block design. Okay, and I'll do the same for the XOR gate and I'll speed this part up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to add one more logical block in here. So let me duplicate the AND gate. This time I'm going to change the width to four. I'll leave it as an AND gate. And rather than connecting single bits, I'm going to show you how to connect multiple bits to my IP. So now slice seven and slice eight. Okay, I want four bits this, so I'm using bits zero to six. So my D in down is going to be seven, and I want four bits, so seven, eight, nine, ten, and I can enter these settings here. And I can do the same for slice eight. I want four bits again, output, and I'm gonna start at 11, 11, 12, 13, 14, will give me the output that I want. I can now connect the outputs from my slices to the input of my four bit AND gate. So you can see all my blocks now have their inputs connected. Okay, now I need to connect my outputs from my logic gates to my PSGPIO input. If I only had a single block, a single output that I need to connect to my inputs, I could make a direct connection. I'm going to have the same problem that I had before. This would be okay for a single block. The lower bits will be connected. Any upper bits unconnected will give me a warning, but it will be okay. But I'll run into problems when I try to connect additional outputs from my blocks to the PS GPIO inputs. So I need to do something similar to what we did on the other side of these logic blocks. This time I'm going to use a concat block and this will concatenate multiple wires together and give me a single bundle of wires that I'll then use to connect to my PS GPIO. So I have five blocks. So initially I'm going to configure the concat block to have five ports. I will need to change this later on and I'll explain why, but for now let's assume we just need five ports. I'll select five and you can see the widths of these ports will be automatically configured. They're all single bits for now. So let me go ahead and connect up all the outputs from my logic gates to this concat block. Notice I have four bits coming out of that four bit AND gate uh, connected to input four of the concat block. For now, they're showing a single bit zero to zero, but when I run a validate on the design, this will automatically update. You can see I've got eight bits coming out of this block. I can now connect that directly to my PS GPIO inputs. However, I do have a problem here. So I've connected my outputs, I've connected my inputs, and by default, these will connect to the lower bits out of this 64-bit bundle. And at the moment, I've got a clash. My inputs are connected to the lower bits and my outputs are connected to the lower bits. I said these PS GPIO support tri-state, but my inputs and outputs are mutually exclusive. Um, I don't want them to, to share here. So I've got a clash. I need to do something to address this. I could do this in different ways. And in this case, I'm going to offset the inputs. So I'm using 15 bits for my outputs. So I'm going to shift my inputs up that same number of bits, 15 bits. And the way that I do that is by adding, um, adding a dummy signal to that concat block. So I'll add a constant block to my design. I'll configure it to be 15 bits wide. I'll set the constant value. This is the constant output from this block. I'll set this to zero, but it really doesn't matter. I won't be using it in my design. And I now need to connect that to my concat block. So I'm going to start by reconfiguring the concat block. I'll add an additional port. The new port input five has been added to the concat block. This is actually at the upper end of my pin range. So the way this concat block works, so in zero, whatever's connected there will be connected to the lower order pins. So I want to insert my constant block at that point. So I need to do some reconfiguration of my connections here. I'll do this by duplicating the connection and then I'll disconnect. I'll just shift all of these connections up by one. So let me go ahead and do that. My input zero port is now available. I can connect it to my constant block. And that's my design complete. So I'm going to go ahead and create the HDL wrapper that I need in Vivado. 
I can see that there's a warning, so I want to be careful here and check what it is. Uh, but actually, if we read the error message, it's just telling me that I selected 64 PSGPIO. It's telling me only the lower order bits will be connected. I was aware of that in my design. If I wanted to fix this warning message so it wouldn't appear, I could go back and select the bits that I need for this design. I'm not concerned about this warning. I can ignore it. I can go ahead and build my design. One thing you might want to do for a design like this is to set synthesis to be global. Um, this design consists of multiple very simple IP. Some of these IPs are just literally connecting slicing wires. Uh, I tend to find that the global synthesis option works better for this type of design. Out of context tends to be good when you've got larger IP blocks in your design and you can build those in parallel. I can now go ahead and click generate bitstream. Once the implementation is complete, I can go and check for those files. So if I go to Windows and open Explorer and browse to my project directory, I know that my design will be in the implementation directory and runs. I can find my bit file. I sometimes like to reorder by size. The bitstream tends to be the largest file in this directory. And I like to copy this to my top level project directory. I'm gonna to need to transfer this to my board to use it with pink. I then need to find the HWH. I can usually stumble around through these directories and find the HWH, but I find it easier just to do a search. You may have more than one HWH, but you can usually identify the one that you need, the top level one, easily enough. And you can see the path here, it's in sources. Sources again, BD, the block diagram name, and then HW underscore handoff. And again, I like to copy this file to the top level directory. So these are the two files that I need to use with pink. The file names for both of these need to match, so I'll just rename the bitstream, the bit file to match the HWH. I'm also going to export the tickle for the block diagram. I will make this available with the tutorial. This will create a tickle file that I can use to regenerate this block diagram. If we open up this file in a text editor, I just want to show you that I said at the start I'm using my pink Z2 board. You can see the Zinc 7020 part on this board. If you're using a different board or a different device, you can create your project, select your device or your board, and rerun all the tickle commands underneath this part to regenerate the design for a Zinc board. There will be some differences for Zinc Ultra Scale. Okay, so that concludes this part of the tutorial, and in the next part, we will see how to use the pink GPIO class.